Hi everybody. Uh, I think it's Wednesday. <laughs> it's all feeling a bit strange, isn't it? I'm sure you all are. And I hope everybody's okay and um, you're getting through all of this. What would be interesting is over the weeks, you guys see my hair growing and uh, I saw a very funny video yesterday about a lady singing about not being able to go to the hairdressers. So yeah, that'll be all of us. Anyway, this uh, week's class is about hand quilting. So the weather's improving a little bit, still stay in. Um, but I thought if you were sitting outside and you want to do a little bit of hand sewing, then this is an easy project. So again, I'll break it up into short uh, bites uh, because that seems to be the best way for me to upload it. Although I am supposed to be having a lesson tonight on uh, better ways of doing this. So might all change by next week. Anyway, hand quilting, obviously very, very traditional. Um, pre sewing machines is what the only thing people would have been able to use. So what I thought I'd do in this first part is show you some basic equipment that you would need. So nothing very different, but there might be a few things that you, uh, you need to gather. So firstly, you need a piece of work to put your quilting onto. And the area that we often do hand quilting, we call it our white space but of course it can be any colour. It just means that there's no piecing. So it's a space that needs to be filled. So if I say white space, that's what I mean. I don't mean just white fabric. Okay, um, thread. So I've got a few bits here. This is actually a sashiko thread and it is very thick. It's almost like string, but it's lovely to sew with. So I'll talk about that a bit later on. Um, embroidery thread that you might have, or I found this in the cupboard, I don't do embroidery, but somebody must have given it to me. Now, the good thing with this is you can divide it up into threads. So I think there are six twisted together. So you could split it up and use two or three, whatever you want for the effect you wanted. Now, this is Aurifil hand quilting thread. Again, it's very thick. I'm not sure how much of that you can see, how thick it is. But you can do the same thing again. You can split it um, if, you don't, if you want a finer effect or use the whole thing. That's entirely up to you. And this is a machine variegated thread, which if you haven't got anything else, then just use your normal thread, but double it up. So thread it through your hand needle, and sew it in two, th fold it in two and put a knot at the end and use it, use it like that. So you can use, you know, there's no hard and fast rules for this. Um, needles, hand stitching needles, they need to have a sharp point depending whether you're going through just single layer of fabric or whether you include in the wadding. So these are sashiko needles, but again, use what you've got as long as uh, you know you can get your thread through and, and it's sharp enough. Don't use a bobbin because obviously that's that's going to be blunt at the end. You need different ways to mark your pattern. So this is a friction, it's um, a felt tip friction. So I sometimes use those because they iron off. This is a water erasable chalk pencil and I think I got it free with a magazine. So just sharpen the end as best you can and you can use those. Um, my favourite is the Chaco chalk pen, but I've got it filled with pounce thread. Now it works really well on dark fabrics, not so great on white because it's it's now only very pale blue. But anyway, you, try, you could always use a pencil, just a basic pencil and piece of fabric. Now, you might have things like this, which are pattern stencils. So these again were free with magazines and they've got little slices in them, which I'm, I'll show you in the next video how to mark your fabric. But these are great because you can reuse them so many times, lots of different patterns. And you know, if they were free, even better. And the third way is, you might have a, a paper pattern. So obviously if we were having class, this is what I would be handing out to you. Now, what you do with these 
is you lay your fabric over the top just a single layer don't try and do this with the backing and the wadding on it doesn't work you lay your single layer of fabric on and you trace the design through so what I found really helpful with this particularly if fabric was a bit thicker I sellotape the pattern to a window so I was getting light from the back if you've got a light box you use a light box but I tried doing it with this and then put my fabric over and then I traced it okay wait for number two